Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, and this is episode 37. What Diane said. Uh, we had a, a loss in the knitting community this week, and I would just like to say everything that Diane said. She said it so well, Diane of Knittables, and said my heartfelt sympathies to Carrie's family and I let them all know that we're thinking about them. So. Please join the knit alongs for the, uh, I think it's coffee and crosswords shawl. There's a bunch of knit alongs in her honor. Please join those and um, let her family know that we're thinking about them. Carrie had contacted me earlier, uh, earlier in November, a couple weeks back, saying please wear some hideous Christmas sweater or Christmas outfit for podcasting during this month. And I am agreeing with Diane that I'm going to wear Christmas themed clothing all through the month in memory of Carrie. I, this was the closest I've got. I, that's what I'm doing. So I'm thinking my thoughts are with them. And um, I need to cast on a shawl as well. So that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching. This is episode 37. Happy Thanksgiving for those of you that celebrate Thanksgiving. It was not this past week, the week before. I'm a little delayed in recording for you all. But there was a lot going on. So Roland had his second Thanksgiving and had a good time and wore his um, feral, green feral sweater that I knit him. And when we came back, just there was a whole calamity of errors. I don't know if that's what to call it. Just, you know, when it rains, it pours. Linus, you might see him. His Something happened to his eye while we were away, and it's all wonky, and we had to go to the vet and the optometrist, and he's on three different prescriptions, and we're hoping that it's going to clear up. So if you see him, it looks not so great. So hopefully he won't. Um, there's no table in front of me for him to stand on. But So that happened. I had to take... Wednesday morning off because I couldn't send, yes, see, he's walking around meowing and sneezing. <laughs> I couldn't send Steve with Roland and Linus to the optometrist. It just wasn't going to work. So I went and he road wrangled and I talked to the vet. So uh, that was Wednesday, I think. And then the part of our muffler, but not our muffler, like the exhaust system was hanging off the CRV, so we had to get that fixed. And on top of that, it snowed, and oh yeah, we need Civic tires. So we had to get tires for the other car. It's just like a lot of coordinating and appointments and being down a car and driving around a cat. <laughs> but we made it through, so it was a eventful week, even though those really shouldn't be big things when you have a little person and you care about your cat. It can be challenging. So that's my week in review, not that I normally but <sighs> okay okay let's talk about knitting let's talk about what I've been working on so this past week on the way up to the in-laws for Thanksgiving did I take them out oh my god I can't even show you they're in the Christmas knitting pot and by the magic of time warp I can show you them so I finished the fingerless mitts these are uh, beaded fingerless mitts by Margie Lafreniere they were in the 100, no, 101 Skein Wonders series in the sock weight book. Um, you can see that they are out of Claudia Hand paints. They have this beautiful Pico edge at the top. I really like them. I really like them. I hope that Roland Sticker Lady Tracy will like them as well. Yes, my nose itched. <laughs> so I finished those off. I sewed, I rather than... Um, Picking, so you knit the pico, and rather than picking up and keep going, I decided to sew it down later. So I did a lot of sewing in the car on the way up to the in-laws for Thanksgiving. So those are off the needles. Yay! And those were knit on 2.5 needles, 1.5 for the pico. 
Um, I think you've seen this before. I'm not sure, but here's the, so I have to knit a second set because there are two daycare ladies. Incoming Mac. Mac. Come on, honey. Okay. Well, I think he's going to be happy sitting next to you. No, he's not. Mac -a So, um, Annie is his second daycare lady in his classroom, and she, whoops, that's the wrong hand. She's, um, very tall and slender, and so I cut a few stitches out of the pattern, thinking that, you know, I wanted these a little more fitted to fit her. I did the same cable and rib pattern that I had done before. I haven't sewn down the Pico on these yet, so you can see how that works. Or I sewed down the wrist one, but not the others, so... And it has this nice pearl stitch palm. So I'm very pleased with that one so far. And here's my second one. Just a little bit going. So I still have time. I probably want to get these packaged up along with a Duncan gift card and maybe some soap or something. I'm not sure. And uh, get them to them a couple, first two weeks of the month, you know, just to make sure they, they know we love them. He's sitting on my glasses, so I take off my glasses and I set them on the bench. Mm. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's that kind of day. So those are the fingerless mitts. Um, you may watch the What You Swatchin' podcast. If you don't, you should. Emily is a laugh riot. I love her. And she and Allison of Hollywood Knits, who I met both of them at SSK, super sweet ladies, very funny. Um, they are doing the beat knit, knit it along. So I know, I don't know if everybody feels this or if it's just something, I don't know. But yes, let's knit sweaters. I'm in the mood. So I had been trying, you remember my goals of 12 and 2012. I knit nine or 10, nine shawls, I believe. And I was trying to get to 12, but you know what? I'd rather knit some sweaters. So I'm not going to complete that. I'm not going to complete... 12 sweaters for Roland, 12 tops for Roland, or 12 pairs of socks for other people. But dang it, if you don't have gold, what what can you accomplish? And I'm pleased with what I have accomplished, so that's enough for me. So back to the beat knits. So I have two sweaters on the needles is the moral of that. Two sweaters for me, which is a lot, which is a bit of my crazy. If you watch the Stockin' It Zombies podcast, they're doing a crazy knit along. So what's your crazy? So knitting two uh, 48-inch bust sweaters at the same time is crazy for me. I'm more of an accessories girl. So this beatnik pattern is by Nora Gogan, and it was published, It was. it's the Knitty Deep Fall 2010, and I love it. The pattern, I'm not giving anything away. She gives you colored charts, so you don't have to color code things. Um, start knitting. I'm using my Busy Minds design bag. I hope you didn't just see my pajama pants. <laughs> um, I am... So here's how far I am. I did not opt for converting it into the round. I figured the cables would be enough of a challenge for me to, like, lock in my brain. And as it is now, I do about four rows a night. So Roland goes to bed. I knit four rows or so on this. Not much more. And then I do um, some stockinette stitch knitting. So it's just straight ahead. Don't really have to think about it. Because after a long day at work and with him, my brain's fried. But I'm, it's like, you know that potato chip feeling where you just want to do one more row, one more row. So that's how I've been. Um, I've done one chart repeat so far. I'm about five inches into it. I am, so here's my changes to the pattern. I am going to make it um, about three inches longer than it is so that it hits me a little lower, probably the bottom of my zipper, my jeans, uh, just because I like a 19-inch sweater. Like I've measured sweaters I like to wear, and from the armhole down is typically 19 inches. So I'm adding in some extra before starting the waist shaping. So that's what's going on there. There's noises, but it's not the baby. So, <laughs> and uh, for this, I am using U.S. size eight, my knit picks, because I always use knit picks. That's why I never think to say it. So sixes and eights, um, and the yarn is 
Divine Zenith, which is a discontinued yarn, unfortunately. I happen to really like it. It's, I don't know, eight or nine strands. It's not very loosely plied, which is probably why it was discontinued. It can be a bit splitty, but I'm really enjoying it. And the cables look okay to me, right? Because for me, visually, when I look at this pattern, what I see is that big, beautiful center cable. That's the intricate, all interwoven section right there. That's what jumps out at me. And to me, it doesn't look like that. And you're saying, you're using variegated yarn. I know, I know, I know. I'm going to over dye it. So that's the other um, a modification, if you will, that I'm making. So this was stash yarn that I've had forever. And I have well a lot of it. <laughs> so I thought it would be good to use it for a cable pattern and over dye it. I'm probably going to go with this deeper rusty orange color. Oh my god, the cat is driving me insane! So, um, but anyways, it's, that cable looks really small to me, and I think proportionally it's not going to look nearly as big on me as it does on the model, but that's okay. These side cables are actually more, dif I find them more difficult than that center panel, so, I don't know, be impressed by those. <laughs> So there you go. Um, yeah, I used quite a bit of my skin, but not not that much. And it's coming along. It's coming along. So I'll be doing waist decreases probably Sunday night. <laughs> we'll see. On the weekend, I tend to get a little more knitting done. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So I'm really loving it. And a sweater's worth of yarn. Well, no. Half a sweater's worth of yarn and the pattern fit very easily into my Busy Minds design bag here as I try to get it in. It's just, there you go. So that's on the needles. And I'm happy. I cast it on thinking because it was like cast on Thanksgiving Day. And I cast on thinking, oh, I'll just see. Like, I really don't like this yarn, but I do want to knit this sweater. And I, it was a 50-50. It was going to be a toss-up whether or not I would keep going with it. I've done one chart repeats, repeat. I've counted up. I think I need to do eight for the back panel. So I'm just going to keep going because I'm really enjoying doing the cables. So And they're starting. It's weird. I haven't done a lot of cable knitting. I've done actually very little or very simple cables, I should say. Um, it's not something that's big on my list. But I have... That reminds me, I have something to show you next time. Write it down so I don't forget. I'm not going up to Rowan's room to get it, but his grand gave him a beautiful Thanksgiving gift, so I can't wait to show you. Uh, I will show that to you next week. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. She's a cable knitter. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, it was more of an experiment than a, like, full force, yes, I really am going to knit this, so 50-50 whether or not I keep with it, and I'm really enjoying it, so I'm going to. And now is the point in the show when we have Rhinebeck Yarn! So there you go, you can see this is another skein of Socks That Rock, medium white. This is a gorgeous, I don't even, the color's coming off, the tag, I mean, the color is not coming off. It's called Royal Flush, and I just bought a new um, winter uh, knee-length swing coat, wool swing coat. That's, that's my look, if you will, yes, because deep inside I want to be Captain Jack Hartness, so I like to buy really long coats. Um, haven't quite made it to the ankle leg, so I'm not quite that cool yet. I'll get there. But anyways, my new one is called Blackberry, and it's it's not any of these colors, but it's a very rich purple, very dark, dark, rich purple, and everything shows on it. I didn't realize that that would be a problem, but I'm, I'm inspired by this yarn and that coat, and I think I'm going to knit myself some sort of, or I'm going to design some sort of beret, I don't know, design a hat to, that matches to wear with it, so... Um, look for that in the in the coming weeks. So that's this week's Rhinebeck yarn. Um, I just felt like throwing it in there, you know, because I'm haphazard and I'm all over the place. Next up, Mimi's Christmas sock. So these are socks that I'm knitting for my mother. They're going to be shorties. 
I already, you'll recall, knit with this Bobby C in the minty colorway. I knit rolling a pair of socks, and today he and I went shopping, and we got the stuff for the bottom of the socks, so I'm going to put it on his and Mimay's socks. Um, so here's our first one finished. Just a two-by-two two rib. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. But uh, she really likes hand knit socks, and these will keep her, her feet toasty warm. So that's the first one, and they're just little ankle socks. So, uh, the second one, I have not cast on yet, but I will, I will, I still have time, still have time. So, what else? Oh, the, the can you hear the phone ringing? I'm not going to answer it, but the answering machine is going to kick in. So, we're going to knit for a minute, and look, there are needles magically in her hand. How is this? Well, <laughs> um, these, this is the second of two, because I only have two feet. I do not have three feet. The second of two uh, socks this <laughs> is the Vanilla Bean Sock by Emily, again, of the What You Swatchin' podcast. I am using the Desert Vista Dye Works Colorway Schools in Session. That is how it looks so far. Um, I am working on the second one because the first one is done. So these are, I wasn't really sure what to do with them. I just wanted to knit with the yarn, so I cast them on. And now that they're finished, I think they're a little bit too um, too loud for anyone but me. But I, I very much like them, so I will be wearing them. Um, you, I didn't do an alternate heel and toe as like the pattern calls for. I just kept going in the pattern, keep it simple. And you could see, so you know, I had some variation in the striping sequence, and my this one ended up looking a little wonky because there wasn't quite enough because those are the gusset rows, so the rows were a little shorter. But I don't care. I don't care if it doesn't look exactly the same. I think it's pretty cool. So there's. There it is, and it fits lovely, and that's how much I have on the second one, so a little bit past the toes, a little bit past the toes, hello Mac, hello, um, and then in case you were wondering, I did buy a new yarn on uh, the holiday, over the holiday, so I didn't go shopping for yarn, well I did, but I didn't buy anything. On Black Friday, I actually went out with my brother and brother-in-law and sister-in-law, and um, we had a few toy stores and went to Walmart and did some shopping at J.C. Penney's, which is so hilarious in Rockland, where my in-laws live. It's just it's the oddest little department store I've ever seen. <laughs> it's nothing like any J.C. Penney's I've ever been to. So we got some stuff there. Um, I didn't buy anything at the LYS. I wasn't really a fan. And the place was packed and I didn't see any sale going on. So I just, you know, spun around twice to just make sure. I looked at the local stuff, said, mm, not for me. And we moved on. So Sunday night after we were home and I was perusing around on, uh, on Ravelry, I saw some coupon codes and got tempted. So. Uh, there's yarn coming. It's not all here yet, but there is one skein here, and that is um, Gnome Acre. So I have never used this yarn before, but the fact that this colorway is called Gnome on Fire, ugh, I think that's hilarious. Like, all of her colorways are so funny, and I'm probably telling you stuff you already know. I guess I feel like I'm late to the Gnome Acre's party. But I did order a skein, and it has the Stellina in it, and, or I think it's Stellina, whatever it is that makes it sparkly. And it's very, very soft, uh, 7520 nylon superwash merino, 5% Stellina. It's called Sparkle Gnome. I think it's gorgeous. No makers. So I got that. Um, I'm still in the Into the World Club. Still very happy to be in the Into the World Club. So that came a few weeks back. Spoiler alert. This is the November, so I'm really late. <laughs> November color. Um, I... <laughs> Hamam Meiji? How about that? So that is the colorway name. 
It is a three ply superwash merino fingering weight, 490 yards, so it's a really generous skein. Very soft, wants to be a shawl. Very much wants to be a shawl. Maybe it wants to be a hitchhiker. So it has this great plum, golden, and then the green with fades in between. It's so pretty, so pretty. I'm a sucker for their stuff. You know it. So that was what's new for yarn. And then last but not least, I have to talk to you about my Harvest Moon sweater. So, in the Erin Lane bag. Um, the Harvest Moon is by Heidi Kermier. I'm knitting it on US size 7s. I am using the Yauza What a Skein by Miss Babs in the Homestead colorway. And you can see that it's... It's getting down there. I have two skeins, and this is my first one. I would say I'm probably half done. I have not weighed it, but I've used quite a bit of it. It's a gorgeous color, though. Can I tell you that a top-down raglan sweater takes forever to knit the yoke? You think you're done. You knit for three more hours. You're at the exact same spot. I swear to God. Oh, my God. It's painful. Did I say one to be a sweater? Can I renege on that? Can I change my mind about that? Because I really don't think I want to be a sweater knitter. I really don't. <laughs> That's what I was saying. And so that was part of the reason why I cast on the beatnik. I worked on all kinds of other things because it was just like, all right, I'll do a row. An hour later, I'm done this row. <sighs> but I persevered. I did. Because you can see there's some purple hanging here. And why would I have purple yarn hanging? Well, I've split off for the sleeves. Yay! So the rows are much more manageable now. Much, much, much more manageable. I just, just split off for the sleeves. I think I've done two rows since. But still, oh, it feels so much better to have those off. So I'm really excited about how beautiful this yarn is. I don't know how well you can see the color variation. The pattern's very well written. I'm super enjoying it. Um, she's very clear, so she tells you at what point to lengthen if you want to lengthen, and I think I'm going to. Although there isn't a schematic, which I really prefer patterns to have schematics, so I can see where, what I'm going to knit, because otherwise it's, you know, you're reading through going, okay, this is six and a quarter, this is nine, add that together, and then, you know, so, um, but I don't think there's any way shaping, I think it's just straight down here and do the pockets, which are really cool construction, so I'm excited to do those. I might, um, because I don't have a lot of yarn, switch in some either brown or gold for the inside of the pockets. We'll see if I can figure this out so that the face of the pocket, what shows, will stay with the Harvest uh, Homestead colorway, but then on the inside of the pocket, it'll be an orange-red color, so we'll see if I can do that thinking that will extend my yardage on the homestead. So, yay, it's coming along. And you know, that's like probably a third of the sweater, like the bulk of it, the biggest rows, the biggest, longest sections, and I'm done. So, really like the button band. It's an interesting construction, or it's not a button band, it's the way she finishes the edge. It's very cool. It's, it looks sort of like an I-cord edging, but it's very different in the way it's constructed, so. And then, oh, the other modification I'm making is you're supposed to have this one buttonhole. I'm going to have three, maybe four buttonholes. Maybe I'll go all the way down. I don't know. But I'd like to have buttons, just to have the option to close my sweater. So, there you go. That is what's new, what's on the needles, what I'm thinking about knitting next, and how my life has been. There you go. <laughs> I hope you are having a great start to the month of December, getting in all of your Christmas shopping and doing your Christmas knitting and baking and watching the fun movies and all that. So um, until I talk to you again in about 10 or so days, have a great one. Bye.